Lincoln Riley's having a lot of early success at USC. Does that mean with two Pac-12 jobs now available after Colorado fired Carl Durrell that his coordinators are just destined to be poached by Pac-12 schools? Mm, You never know. Let's go. Locked on Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On Pac-12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin, D1 play-by-play broadcaster. Thank you for making Locked On Pac-12 your first listen or your first view if you're watching on YouTube of the day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your number one source to stay up to date with the Conference of Champions. So if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe, wherever you're listening to or watching the show. Thank you to everybody out there who has done so already. Today's episode of Locked On Pac-12 is sponsored by Simply Safe Home Security. With Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe, 24-7 monitoring agents capture evidence to accurately verify a threat for faster police response. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to learn more. And I'm not alone today here on the show, joined by Mark Culkin, head or host of Locked On USC Trojans. Does some work for On3 as well, as you can see there by the the hat he is donning on, on the show today. Mark, it is good to have you on the show once again, talking a little USC. We'll get to their, their game against Arizona State as well. Want your thoughts there. But the coaching carousel is a fun, fun time for shows like this. Yeah. Kind of kind of jumps at you out of nowhere, huh? One, <laughs> it, 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 one day it, it everybody's does. employed. The next day you got people uh, standing in the bread line. So with a fat wallet to sit on, but nevertheless, they're well, they're, yes, they're that, 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 that's true. Including uh, Scott Frost, for instance, who had, what was it? A $15 million buyout. Like I would love to get fired for $15 million. Now, if Locked On paid me $15 million <laughs> to stop hosting this show, I'd think about it. But then I wouldn't be able to come on here and talk to you fine people and all the Pac-12 fans. And you know what? And people complain that USC has given $10 million as a buyout to Clay Helton. So they got out pretty cheap compared to <laughs> Exactly. So Lincoln Riley's having a lot of success right now. USC is number six. They're in the college football playoff hunt. It's working. It's working fast. And anytime you have success – at the college ranks. And it's true at the professional level as well. I'm pretty sure every position coach or coordinator Sean McVay has ever had for all of, you know, two or 10 games has gotten a head coaching job or at least an interview in the NFL. That's the way this works. You see what they're doing over there. You say, I'd like to have a little taste of that. Let's see if that guy has learned from uh, the head maestro. Lincoln Riley is driving the show at USC. He is solely the, the reason, or not not solely, I, I guess that's a little bit dramatic, but he's a major, major, major part of the reason why it's been such a fast one-year turnaround. The transfers are helping, but his in-game management and play calling combined with the weapons is what is allowing USC to get a lot of victories. So now that there are two Pac-12 coaching jobs available with Colorado and Arizona State, do you think either of the USC coordinators could be candidates after this season for those head coaching vacancies. Um, no, and, and I don't mean that because they, I don't think they. they well, I, let me. Like, I don't think they are, and here's the reason why. Um, Alex Grinch would probably be the closest of the two between he and Josh Henson, but I, I need to see what he does as a recruiter at USC um, before I say, all right, man, that guy's ready to handle the head coaching gig somewhere at a. And let's face it, it's a it's a power five job. It, is that where you want to go at your first place? Colorado or in Arizona State both have their own problems going on right now, different problems, and make that your first job. Uh, I know Alex Grinch can make halftime adjustments with USC's defense. I've seen it happen through five games so far. But again, being a head coach and being a coordinator are two different animals. And I just don't know if either one of them, I mean, I'm focused on Grinch. Uh, Josh Henson, I know he can recruit. I saw him do, you know, offensive line at Texas A&M. He seems to be having a positive effect at USC so far. Um, But again, 
Are they ready to be head coaches? Do they want to be head coaches? And right now, I would probably say stay in your lane. You're great coordinators. I, I don't think they're ready to be head coaches, in my opinion. And who, what, who am I to judge, though? It, it is a different level, and there's a lot to it. And by the way, this is based off a question that came into the show from Mav11 via the, the YouTube comments. And if you ever want a question answered on, the show, answered on the show, you hop in there, ask a question, or you can DM me at smalls underscore 55 or at LO underscore Pac-12. Ask about any team in the conference, as always, and, uh, and I'll answer it. And his question was, do you believe here at SC with offense but more interesting defensive play could lead any other schools or NFL jobs could pull some coaches away or have current coaches solidified to build a juggernaut fight on. And defensively, Mark, USC is much improved. But I, I'm with you that Grinch's time as a defensive coordinator at Oklahoma, they, they, they had some improvements. But he wasn't churning out NFL guys year in and year out. Yeah, there's an occasional... Uh, the, uh, the corner who plays for my beloved Seattle Seahawks, whose name is, is eluding me right now. Trey Brown, I, I think okay. is his name, who's was like a fifth round pick, decent player. Kenneth Murray is probably the best defensive player he's produced. There have been, you know, a couple guys like that. But on the whole, the offense was the reason that Oklahoma had success. And the offense is where the big time recruits came in. And maybe that'll change at USC. And Alex Grinch will bring in players who he turns into first, second, or third round draft picks, and the defense makes major strides from this year to next year. But the body of work to me, and I'm with you that Grinch would be the more likely of the two, and that's the name that goes around in circles more often. He has to have a larger body of work with a higher level of success on the defensive side of the ball. It's not that it's impossible, but I'm with you that right now, he, he's got to build US, the USC's defense into – a top three or four unit in the conference before I could look and say, all right, maybe that is a guy who's capable of being the head coach because the defense is much improved. They're forcing a lot of turnovers, but they still have some issues from a year ago and he should be given time before we do a full evaluation on him to see how he performs in that defensive coordinator role. But if it's anything like what it was at Oklahoma, USC is going to win games because Caleb Williams, Jordan Addison, Mario Williams, and all the other weapons are just going to score 40, 50 points a game. Well, you know, Oklahoma brought in Brent Venables, who's supposed to be a defensive genius. And um, how's that going? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, the last time Brent Venables gave up 55 points, USC was scoring on them uh, in a pretty impressive national championship game. So they had to relive that with Brent Venables again. Now, right now, what Alex Grinch has shown at USC is. He's, is it a Jimmy and Joe's or is it, you know, the X's and O's type of thing? Because he's brought in some guys through the portal, um, but you, you alluded to it. There are some glaring weaknesses on this defense uh, up front. But what we saw in the first 30 minutes against Arizona State, it was embarrassing. I mean, if you're going to give them a grade, that defense was going to get an F. But 30 minutes later, you know, they're – They've got Arizona State stopped cold. They gave up 14 yards in the third quarter. So he's doing something right with the Jimmys and Joes, and his X's and O's might work. What he had in Oklahoma, I don't know. You know, I didn't really focus on it that much. I know that it, it was an offensive team, offensive identity. But right now, USC is only giving up, what, 18, 19 points a game? And they're scoring 42 points a game with a cobbled-together roster. So you got to give Grinch some credit. Maybe his scheme does work if he has the type, the right players. And you're going to get a, you're going to have a bigger pool of players to choose from in LA than you do at Oklahoma. And let's just state the facts. Oklahoma might be a brand and you're going to recruit nationally and you're going to have the state of Texas and Oklahoma, but USC is a national brand on the level where not only do you have the Southern California area to recruit, which that's all you really need sometimes, but you can go pluck the player you want out of Texas, out of Florida, Ohio, wherever, and then you can just monopolize that transfer portal. Yeah, and, and they had a great deal of success with the transfer portal in, in this first offseason. I think from a national recruiting standpoint, you, you have a, a little bit of a higher ceiling at USC 
because of the talent you have in your backyard. Because yeah. I, I think Oklahoma, you're more likely to be able to go into Texas and pull out a high-level player from there than you are necessarily at USC. doesn't mean the Trojans can't do it, but if you're talking about where they're going to try and make their money from a recruiting standpoint, you're going to go there. But then the thing is Oklahoma has to compete with Texas. They have to compete with Texas A&M. They have to compete with Oklahoma State, with Baylor, with, with TCU. There's a bunch <laughs> of respectable programs there. And USC, for kids in L.A., if you're talking about geographical proximity has to compete with UCLA who has a coach that doesn't really care about recruiting much and probably is just going to use the transfer portal in in the coming years in Chip Kelly and then Stanford and Cal are in the state up the road with San Diego State and Fresno State and neither of those schools maybe Stanford every now and then are, are going to go after the, those high level kids I, I can tell you have a thought on that and we are going to hear what it is after a reminder this episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. The numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over four million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. And at Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. I know because I use Simply Safe in my own home. My housemate and I have got it, and here's why I love it. They have got a bunch of features that are gonna keep your house safe. Sensors, cameras, Everything that you need with 24 7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe's agents call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. So, Mark, I, I I will let you come come back in now and talk about that that recruiting thought that the the geographical mm-hmm. competition in terms of the schools that are around you is not as stiff at USC, and that's why I think the ceiling, the Lincoln Riley recruited at a top ten level at, at Oklahoma at USC, I think it's ju- just a hair above what the potential is than what he had with the Sooners. I would say, Spencer, have you looked at Oregon's roster recently? Yes. And and where the players come from? All over the place. I would say the vast majority of them come from California, Southern California. A a lot of them have, yes. And I'm not pointing just at Oregon. The point I'm making, it's not just Stanford and UCLA that USC competes against. against. The entire Pac-12 recruits the Southern California, California footprint very heavily. Arizona State's roster is East L. You might as well just call it California because that's where the majority of their players come from. Arizona, same thing. So I totally get your point. I'm not disputing it. Um, I just think you're maybe understating how heavily Southern California gets recruited by the Pac-12 in general. That's uh, true. And, well, and that's, I, that was my only point. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think where, where I'm coming from is competing. Like the entire Pac-12 certainly goes there. And I, I did neglect Oregon because they, they've they been hitting Southern California very, very hard, which, if you know me, is a little bit ironic. But competing <laughs> against the rest of the Pac-12 or the schools that are in that area, to me, is not as tough as recruiting against okay. Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma State. That's why I think the ceiling's a little higher and why Grinch will have a chance to prove that he can bring in the sort of bodies you need to build at least a uh, – a top four or five defense in the Pac-12. And if USC can do that, then they could win the league, not just this year, but next year as well, before they go to the Big Ten. Yeah, the philosophy has always been, and if you just want to use the Pete Carroll model, put a fence around your backyard, take the best of the best, and then you go pluck, you know, potential NFL first-round draft picks from the other states. And that's how he built his rosters. I, I can only imagine what he would have done in today's era with the portal. It would be scary for college football. Um, yep, Pete Carroll with the with the with the transfer portal as it is now. Yeah, that's a lot of play. That they they they'd have a lot. That's of, a lot of Reggie Bushes on your team. <laughs> you'd have a lot of <laughs> Reggie Bushes on the team. That that's very true. But I think we're in agreement there that Grinch could become. He's the more likely of the two to get poached yeah. by another school, maybe one of the Pac-12. But I, I don't think Arizona State or Colorado should be looking at him right now. Now, in two or three years, yeah, another school might look at Alex Grinch, depending on how that defense performs, not just in their last year in the Pac-12, but as they go to to the Big Ten as well. But right now, it feels like 
the body of work he's put together as a defensive coordinator with Lincoln Riley there is not sufficient for me to look at him and say, yeah, Colorado, I think you should look at Alex Grinch. I think you should try and try and go that route. I, I think there are better options. And let's go into what – Oh yeah, go ahead. You got one more. Uh, I was just going to finally say, you know, on the financial end of it, you know, the Pac-12 is in a situation where they want eyeballs watching the conference with whatever new TV contract they get. You got to bring some splashy names in there. And I don't know if – Alex Grinch or Josh Henson are going to sell tickets in Boulder or in Tempe. Yeah, I definitely don't think Henson would. Grinch would, again, be more likely. But sure. the, the the national kind of branding of that particular hire would be Lincoln Riley's defensive coordinator. Oklahoma's defenses were never that good. That's how that's how more casual fans, sure, I, I exactly. think, would see it. And I'm with you. It wouldn't be splashy. But let's get into the, this coaching carousel that just continues to evolve in college football start with the Colorado Buffaloes and then we'll wrap up with uh, the Arizona State Sun Devils here. So the Buffs fire Carl Durrell after an 0-5 start, which I don't know if you know the stat, Mark, the listeners do, but I I feel like it's just so unheard of that people need to be aware of of just how poorly things were going there in Boulder. Colorado, through the first five games of this year, was a two-touchdown or more underdog in every game. And they are 0 and 5 against the spread. They are that that is how low it has gone. I have twice put them in my Pac-12 prime picks. I have twice been betrayed by the team out there in in Boulder. So now they they've got a coaching search and they need to go. I I, I think offensive because man the the defense was at least semi competent at times while Darrell was there. But for the most part, it was a little bit of a mixed bag. And this year, the offense has just been a a train wreck. I don't know how else to describe it. I'm sorry, Colorado fans, but you've seen three quarterbacks on the field and none of them were even close to leading you to a win. I thought JT Shrout, who is the most physically gifted of the bunch with arm talent and his legs, might have had a chance to do something. And then he went, what was it, 6 of 21 with two interceptions in a game. And I said, yeah, no, okay, never mind. That's... That's incorrect. I want to. I want your thoughts on who Colorado could potentially be looking at right now, Mark. But I want to throw a name out to you first, and then you can toss out anybody that that you want. That's the great part about a coaching search is see where everybody's heads are at. Sure. Wisconsin just fired Paul Christ. He had a wildly successful run while he was there. He's something like sixty-seven and twenty-eight 72, as Wisconsin's head coach. Winning percentage. He won seventy-two percent of his games in the Big Ten. At Wisconsin, that does not have, much like Colorado, and this is key, a huge recruiting pool right in his backyard or even anywhere close to it. Nor does Wisconsin have the sort of national name brand recognition that, say, a Michigan would, right? You can get some good players out of Michigan, but it's not a, an Arizona, a California, even a Washington now, a Texas, a Florida, any, any of those sorts of states but Michigan has that sort of brand power, but it's certainly a lot stronger than what you've got at Wisconsin. And still the Badgers have been a perennial eight to 10 win team. They've played in a couple Rose Bowls. They had a, a 12 and 0 season that was derailed by Ohio State a few years back. Like Paul Chris won a lot of games. I think he's like their third all time winningest coach, ironically, behind Brett Bielema, who just came in and smacked him as the head coach of Illinois that led to right. his firing. That name. If I'm Colorado, that's intriguing to me. What do you think? You can do worse, right? Especially yes. for Colorado. I mean, it's not like they're taking some – they are literally taking the low-hanging fruit right now. If it's there and you can work something out, he would definitely be right there at the top of the list. Um, but I, here's a name. If not Eric the enemy now, when – I guess if does Colorado, he want to come back to call? Does he want to come back to college though? Because that's the question you've always got to ask. Though. Does he want to be a head coach? That's true. That that's true. But adding recruiting into the mix when you've been at the NFL for so many years, there are a lot of coaches who look at that and go, mm, "No way." Okay, well, you know what? If you want to be an NFL coach, and for whatever reason why he hasn't been yet, maybe you spend a few years rehabbing your alma mater. You you show them what, what you can do. And say, hey, now tell me why I can't be an NFL head coach. I took a hot pile of garbage and I made them an eight, nine, ten win team in two or three years. Um, at Colorado. I yeah, why not? 
but again, you got it. That's intriguing. Yeah. Um, you know, I just, I was doing some quick research. They're throwing out the names out there. Bill O'Brien. That's a I think that'd be, a, I think that'd be a great hire. Dude. I don't know if, I don't know if he would go to Colorado. He wouldn't, he certainly wouldn't stay. You know, when, when you're a head coach at Penn state and then in the NFL and you come back and you're going through the head coaching rehab program that is Nick Saban's assistant. Your sights are set on an SEC job because, like, think of Lane Kiffin, right? Didn't work out at, at USC and other places, whatnot. Goes to Alabama, and his first head coaching gig is where FAU. Then he gets the Ole Miss job right. and is an SEC head coach. I think a guy like Bill O'Brien. I don't know that it'd be a bad hire if you could get three really successful years out of him and just reestablish a more successful brand for Colorado football, even if he's not going to be a guy who stays for five to 10 and have a, a great run of success because he might have his sights set elsewhere. I don't know that that's the, the worst idea. Again, you could you could do a lot worse than that, but Colorado might also be looking for a guy who's in it for the long run. Well, you know, like, like you said, I, I think Colorado has to go with an offensive type of identity. So that's why I, I'm focusing on – I think that's why I, we're focusing on the names we are. Um, you know, what was the, the, the name skipping my head right now? But who was the coach of Colorado uh, at Colorado? It's not in Emeril's brother. Um, oh. Um exactly it's right oh here. i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna look it up i'm gonna look so it up anyways keep going. if you want to bring back a personality somebody who's going you know maybe the fans will come back and, and want to watch as well because he's he's going to give you that mike leach effect you never know what he's going to say um dan hawkins is the name you. you're looking for dan hawkins um bring him back why not he, he, at colorado they, it's such a unique place i don't know if you've ever been to boulder but uh, I have it. It's a different place, but they like it's their wonderful. football. Yeah, they love their football. But if there's it's not good, um, there's plenty of other recreational stuff ideas to uh, keep you involved. And um, I, you need somebody with a, who's serious about football, somebody who's going to want to make you come to the games. I think um, I, I think he would be one of those guys. And again, Eric the enemy. I think this would be the perfect opportunity. There's nowhere to go for this program but up. And That's he's, true. You know what? He can't make it worse. That's true. That, there's an advantage to the Colorado job I'll tell you about after I remind you that if you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you're depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. I had one earlier on the golf course today. Fantastic, and it keeps me going. They are delicious, and the newest flavor, of course, is indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. Built has done it again. Cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and, of course, 100 percent real chocolate as always only 160 calories and a whopping 15 grams of protein go get yours now go to built.com use promo code locked on 15 and get 15 percent off your order that's promo code locked on 15 to get 15 percent off your next order of built bars at built.com so the upside of the coaching search right now for colorado and i know it sucks for bus fans because this is bottom out so hard and it's just it's ugly <laughs> it is. It's not just zero and five. It's an ugly, uncompetitive zero and five. The upside, and I don't know if you necessarily make this pitch to to coaching candidates out there, but you're not expected to win right away. You you, you cannot be expected to come in with where this program is at right now and win right away. And I think that's at least somewhat of an upside for Colorado as they embark on this coaching search is no coach and the administration can't go looking for a coach and say, yeah, we need you to win, uh, you know, four or five games in year one. Like, no, in year one, right. I think this is, looks a lot like Arizona's rebuild. They won one game last year, just the one they had an embarrassing FCS loss. And guess what? Jed fish is still there. And Jed fish is three and two going into week six, playing host to 12th ranked Oregon in a big opportunity, right? But the patience has to be there. And I think the administration should communicate that. Like, we expect you to come in, make the program better, but we are going to give you time because of where this has, because of where this is at right now. I think that's something that 
that, that is going to work or potentially could work in Colorado's favor as they look for the next football coach? No, absolutely. Look, there's, there's certain expectation levels at, at different programs. Um, at USC, you have, you're given very little latitude to get your program back to where it belongs. Right. Lincoln Riley knew that. And that's the approach he's taking at Colorado. The next coach is going to come in and he knows he's going to have at least two to three years to get his culture started, to get his players, everything established. Um, and, but again, that's the separation between a USC and a Colorado. Same thing with an Oregon and a, and a, and a Colorado. You don't get the same amount of time at programs that are expected to win now. So, um, yeah, again, I'm going to stick with Eric the enemy. I think he should be the guy. I think the enemy is a decent name to throw out before we came on and started recording. Mark, you threw out Justin Wilcox, which I don't know that it'd be the best hire. I don't know that it'd be the worst hire either, because if you're talking about cultures that are all in on football, yeah. Colorado is above Cal. Absolutely. That's not disputable. They sell that place out. That opening night game for the Buffs against TCU, that environment was awesome. It is a bummer that the team is not good because that environment was fantastic. Students, community, alumni, donor, like everybody showing up to that particular game. So you can pack you can pack that field in Boulder, and you can't do that at Cal. And the question for Justin Wilcox has always been, does he just need – better support around him. I'm not saying it's a massive step up from Cal to Colorado. It could be a minor step up at, at the very least. But I, I also know that he just got a big extension with the bears. So it's unlikely that he, that he'd go somewhere, but I do think that's interesting. I, I want to wrap up Mark and talk about Arizona state for a, a couple minutes because they too are, are in this position. And I think whoever comes in there, Again, Bill O'Brien could be a candidate who may not stay for the long term, but yep. would you take four years averaging eight and a half to nine wins a year with a 10 win or an 11 win season mixed in there? If you're Arizona State, yeah, I, I think you would. But are there any names that jump out to you for for that Arizona State job? I've heard this is more tied to the Colorado job. Former Oregon offensive coordinator Marcus Arroyo, who's the UNLV head coach right now, let me just shut that down. I I don't want to see that name circulating. I'm sure he's a really good guy. I've never heard anything to the contrary, but that is that is not a name that should be that should be getting tossed around here. And I've seen that specifically for the Colorado job, his name on a list of candidates. I saw that and I said, No, you got you gotta aim higher than that. But for Arizona State, where do you think the Sun Devils are looking? Oh, you gotta go prime time. Would you go after Deion Sa- Would you go after <laughs> Yes. Deion yes. Of course I would. Here's why. Arizona State has a little bit of flashiness to it, more, right. I think, than Arizona. And part of that is they're in a desert state. They've got a big party atmosphere at the school. They're not that far from California. I, I would absolutely take a look at, at Deion Sanders. I, I will admit I don't know how Jackson State is performing this season. Does it but- matter? Yeah, because you got to have someone who's proven he can win consistently. You, you okay. want someone who's going to be able to come in and not be learning on the job. He's but... proven he can recruit a couple of five stars from Florida State to commit to Jackson State. That's, That's what he's true. proven. I, I think his record is – the record is not relevant, whatever happens to Jackson State, because you're going to have a, a, a few really good players mixed up amongst players who probably don't get, a, you know – D1 looks. Maybe some of them should, but they're they're not F, you know, they're not power five level players. What would Dion do at an Arizona State? You know, you you know he can recruit. Yeah. Is it, can you, he put you know, together, you know he can, can he, recruit. But can he put together a staff? Or is he just gonna go to all of his ex NFL buddies and say, hey, let's see what we can do here together? Yeah, and I think that might make Arizona State fans a little bit weary, right? Of, I was no, just no, going to no, say, we, Herm we, Edwards we tried that. <laughs> yeah, we, ju- we just had the NFL experiment. I don't know if we want that. Dion feels a little bit more college than Herm Edwards that felt like you you placed a – I'm trying to think of a good analogy, and my brain is is blanking right now. But 
you placed an alien in the middle of a bunch of humans and you hoped he'd be able to assimilate and it just didn't work out that way. Also worthy of note to my point earlier, Jackson State's 4-0 this year. They were 11-2 and a year ago. They were 4-3 and in his first season in the COVID shortened year in, in 2020. So the on-field results have been there. You yeah. have to imagine the recruiting would be there. And it's kind of a logical next step for Deion Sanders unless – an SEC school were to come calling or an ACC school were we're trying to we're trying to lure him over there you go from an FCS HBCU right Jackson State's an, is an HBCU you go from that to taking a step up to the power five level and going to the Pac-12 I don't think that's out of the realm of, of possibility I think O'Brien would be a great candidate for for either of these schools but I don't think Dion would go to Colorado but I think he would consider Arizona State. It doesn't have the richest program history, but it's it's far from the worst. And I think you could win there a lot faster than you could at Colorado. To your to your alien analogy, I was I don't know if you're familiar with the old show Third Rock from the Sun, John Lithgow and those guys. I, I sadly am not. All right. Well, anyways, they were they were aliens in human form that were just dropped in in a college atmosphere. Believe it or not, uh, he played a professor. And he, they just didn't know any better. They would do things that humans would do, but they didn't know they were doing them the wrong way. It was always ironic. So Herm Edwards just, he had no idea that you weren't supposed to host recruits during a COVID season. And he didn't uh, He knew that you were supposed to do, right. yeah, he knew you were supposed to recruit. He just didn't know when the right time was. Yeah, and he, and he didn't understand how far back an NCAA investigation can set your yeah. program and set your recruiting. And, and by the way, I think more so... At Arizona State, then at Colorado, you need to be prioritizing someone who could come in and recruit. I think Colorado, you're never going to be a top 20 class nationally, most likely. You could probably get into the top 40, maybe even the top 30 uh, fr from time to time. But I think you need someone who knows how to get the most out of his players and, and the guys that you can bring up there to Boulder. But at Arizona State, the recruiting potential is top 30, maybe 20, but probably around top 30, maybe top 25 nationally. And you need someone who can do that because they they have you, as much as Colorado has bottomed out on the field, Arizona State has bottomed out off the field in yeah. recruiting. It could not it could not be any worse. I think all those names are quite fascinating, Mark. And uh, we're, we're in agreement that not going to be the USC guys because there's a lot of names that are being thrown out there. We'll continue to discuss them here on the show. Mark Colkin at Mark Colkin, a C at the end of Mark, a K, and then another K in uh, his last name. If you want to check him out on Twitter, he's the host of Locked On USC Trojans. Appreciate you coming on the show and talking about the ever-evolving coaching carousel. Anytime. Appreciate it. I appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time and have a wonderful rest of your day.